Hey folks, how are you doing today? Randy Newberg here. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite states to go hunting, Alaska. Yeah, hard to believe, right? The Alaska deadline is December 15th. December 15th of 2022 at 5 p.m. Alaska Standard Time. Don't wait till the last minute. So, we're going to go through all of the Alaska application details. It's not as complicated as a lot of the other states. Thank you, Alaska. Keep it that way. Uh, and the, all these videos, Alaska being the first of all these ones we're going to do this year, they're all brought to you by Go Hunt Insider. Now, you've heard us say it many, many times. This year, if you get the Insider, you also get the, all their new maps, all their new e-scouting stuff. So, the value just got a whole lot better than it was before. Go to Insider. When you sign up, use promo code RANDY, and they'll give you $50 of credit in their gear shop. So, like I said, Alaska, December 15th, 2022 is your deadline. Now, if you're thinking about spring black bear, know that the black bear seasons run from, in this case, August of 2023 through June of 2024. So if you want to go hunt spring bears in 2023, like six months from now, four months from now, you're too late. That draw happened a year ago. So the draw you're going to do now, if you're working on some of these uh, what we call them controlled hunts down in the islands of the southeast. These applications you would make by December 15th of 2022 are for the spring of 2024. <laughs> I know, you're saying, man, that's crazy. But uh, anyhow, Alaska is not as complicated as other states because, well, I'll get into why it, it's not. I'm, I'm going to go through all the details. I'm going to give you the overview first here. I got all my notes in front of me. Uh, these deadlines, or this deadline that I, I talk about, December 15th, those are for the limited entry permits that in Alaska they call them controlled hunts. And just know that in Alaska, the majority of hunting is done with general tags. Very little of Alaska's hunting is on limited entry permit. Now, I'll go through some of those that are, but the majority of it, and this is why I think Alaska is such a great deal, such a good use of your money, it's easy to go there because so much of the hunting is on a general over-the-counter tag. So, uh, I, I'm going to just say right away, there are three species that if you're going to go hunt them, you need a guide. Doll sheep, mountain goat, and brown bear slash grizzly bear. So if you're a non-resident, you need to be contacting an outfitter to apply for any hunts for those species. Now there's a way you get around that. And it's if you can go and hunt with a resident of Alaska who is second degree kindred. Now, when my grandfather lived there, I got around that because grandfather counts as second degree kindred. But he passed on, and so now I have uncles and cousins who live there, neither of which fall under this pretty tight umbrella Alaska has of second-degree kindred. So check it out. We're mostly talking parents, grandparents, siblings, children, grandchildren, and some in-laws and other stuff. But go, go read in the regulations. If you're going to hunt sheep, goats, or the big brown bears, you're probably going to be hiring an outfitter. Um, but when, when you go to do this in Alaska, and we'll put the link here, uh, they have what's called a draw supplement. So you go to the Alaska Fishing Game website and you download it. It's probably 30, 40 pages. It's a PDF document that has all the hunt codes, any rules, restrictions, season dates, all that kind of stuff. And uh, gives you kind of a two or three page overview of how their system works. I'm going to cover most of that here, but make sure you download that supplement because you got to have it in front of you to know what your hunt codes are. Um, here's all the species you can apply for. Uh, I already mentioned the three that require an outfitter. Black bear, 
the islands of southeast Alaska, that's on a limited entry draw. A bunch of the moose hunts are on limited entry draw. All the bison hunts are limited entry draw. A few of the caribou hunts, all the musk ox, and all the elk. So you'll notice that I didn't say anything about Sitka blacktail deer. That's all general, general tag. There is no draw for those. So you're probably wondering, what's it going to cost me, Randy? You're a tightwad accountant, Newberg. Tell me what it's going to cost me. All right. Your upfront non-refundable fee is going to be $160 for an Alaska hunting license. That's your 2023 Alaska hunting license. You're, you, that's out the door. And then they charge you $5 per species that you apply for. Except for our bison and musk ox, they charge you $10. So those are pretty modest fees compared to the, the rest of the West. I mean, they're right in line with every other Western state. Now, the limited entry fees, you would, everyone thinks about, well, Alaska is a really expensive place. You know, gas costs eight bucks a gallon or something. Well, their tag fees for non-residents, again, are really reasonable. Now, know that Alaska, in these controlled hunts, these limited entry hunts, up to 10% of the tags can go to non-residents. Not a guarantee of 10%, but up to 10%. So here's the prices. A doll sheep tag is 850 bucks. Brown bear slash grizzly bear, 1,000 bucks. Moose, $800. Mountain goat, $600. Bison, $900. Musk ox, the most expensive, $2,200. Elk, $600. Caribou, $650. Black bear, $450. That's a really good deal. So now let's get into the details of how Alaska's draw works. And this is going to be a really short, simple explanation. Does Alaska have a point system? No. Woo! Keep it that way, Alaska. No point system. I hope you never get a point system. Now we don't have to worry about all this squaring points and if you da da da, you get a point for this. And if you're a left handed Finlander born in northern Minnesota, you get two points. Nah. Good for Alaska. So, you go online, after you bought your license, then you decide what species you're going to apply for. And they let you put in six different hunt codes for each species. So if you use all six hunt codes, let's, let's use black bear for example, or caribou. They charge you $5 for each of those six hunt codes. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 bucks if you want to use all six hunt codes. And here's the cool part about Alaska. If there's a hunt you just really want, really bad, they'll let you use that same hunt code for all six of your applications. It costs you 30 bucks, but it certainly increases your odds compared to the person who only put that on their application one time. So, it's, it's pretty simple. That's all the more that you gotta know for Alaska. Now, if you drew a hunt code, say, I don't know, a moose hunt on the Koyukuk last year, you can't apply for that same hunt code this year. You could go apply for a moose hunt on one of the other limited entry hunt codes, but you can't apply for a hunt code that you had in the previous year. Now, two years later, you can apply for it again. So that's probably the only real restriction Alaska has or complication. Uh, party applications, Alaska allows you to do a party application of up to two people. Most states, four or five or six people, only two people in Alaska. Uh, you know, this goes without saying, people say, well, is there a place to hunt in Alaska? <laughs> Alaska has more public land than probably most of the West combined. Uh, it's 90 some percent. If you count all the state trust lands, uh, Alaska is, I think, over 90% public land. So the, finding a place to hunt is not going to be difficult. Just know that there are tribal lands, they're called native corporations, that own a lot of land. And you can't hunt there, so make sure you know about that. And then, in the last couple of years, the federal government has restricted, say, caribou hunting or certain other types of hunting in certain areas of federal ground 
strictly to subsistence hunting. So you and I, as a traveling non-resident, we're not going to qualify under the subsistence rules. There are some small areas relative to the size of Alaska where you can only hunt if you're a subsistence hunter. So make sure you know what that is. Uh, age in Alaska, you got to be 10 years old by the time, by the day that your season opens, if you're going to apply for one of these hunts. And hunter education is required for anyone born after January 1st, 1986. So obviously an old gray haired guy like me, yeah, I'm exempt from that. Some will say, well, I drew, but I got an emergency, something came up, I got a conflict, can I return my tag in Alaska? Well, here's how it works in Alaska. If you draw, you then have to buy what's called a locking tag. And that's when you pay your actual permit fee, those ones I rattled off earlier, you know, $8.50 for doll sheep, uh, moose, aid hunter, blah, blah, blah. If you draw, you have to get your locking tag before you go hunting. So kind of the backdoor method of returning your tag is that you draw, but you just don't buy your locking tag. And it's kind of a, a way of saying, I'm not going. It's not like you're gonna get any of your money back, like your license fee or your application fee, and they're not gonna reissue that to somebody else. But in effect, that's kind of how you return a tag in Alaska. Um, this, this video goes so fast because Alaska is so simple. Uh, a lot of people uh, hear me talk about short-term, mid-term, long-term plan. And they always say, well, is there any short-term option in this state? Well, in Alaska, there are a ton of short-term options. Uh, all the Sitka blacktail is general over-the-counter. Most of the caribou, most of the moose are over-the-counter general tags. So you can pretty much hunt Alaska every year if that's your preference and you're able to pull it off. Just by going up there for caribou, blacktails, moose, and even, well, once you get out of the islands of southeast Alaska, pretty much all the other black bear is general over-the-counter also. So there are, the, Alaska is mostly short-term options. We're, we're doing this video about the longer term options or the harder to draw options that are these limited or controlled hunts, but Alaska is so easy. Keep it that way, please, Alaska. <laughs> Don't follow the, the way that we do it down here in the lower 48. Lastly, people will say, well, is it really worth it? In my mind, yes, with capital letters. Alaska, you know, you think about a $160 non-refundable, non-resident license. Yeah, that's a chunk of money. And there's some application fees, but it's well worth it. Alaska, you know, I, I just think about it to me, what Alaska means, all this intrigue, all this adventure. I took my first trip to Alaska in 1977. And I know some of you watching this video are thinking, well, I wasn't even born then, Randy. I went up there and I got to commercial fish for a whole summer with my grandfather and my uncles. And I got to explore so much of Southeast Alaska. I fell in love with the place. And I've been going back there whenever I can since then. And everybody I know who says, wow, I finally went to Alaska. And I say, was it worth it? And they're like, oh, I'd have paid three times that much. It, it, yeah, it's got some logistics. It's hard to get around, you know, the travel, whether you're a resident or a non-resident, getting to the backcountry in Alaska is not like the lower 48 where you just drive to a trailhead. Maybe you can, but in most instances, it's going to involve a boat or an airplane. That's all right. That's why Alaska can keep over-the-counter general tags and have great hunting. So, for me... If Alaska is something that's been on your mind, figure out the details and go do it. And here's the other beauty about Alaska having most of its hunting on general tags or over-the-counter tags. You do all your other applications in the West and you say, man, my calendar looks pretty bleak. Alaska is a great fallback option. You can fill in a lot of slots on a calendar by using Alaska's general and over-the-counter tags. So, there you have it, folks. Go download the supplement. 
get your application done well in advance of the December 15th deadline and go hunt Alaska this year. And if you want the draw odds about Alaska, I mean, the, Alaska doesn't have a point system, so it's not super complicated. But if you want a strategy article about Alaska, a whole bunch of other stuff, great draw odds, go to Go Hunt, sign up for Insider, use promo code Randy, and they'll put $50 of credit for you in their gear shop. But mostly, make sure that you don't miss that deadline because Alaska doesn't give you any mulligans. You're either in or you're out. And if you're not in, they don't look you up in the phone book and say, hey, we got a tag for you. Doesn't work that way. December 15th, 5 o'clock, Alaska Standard Time. Good luck.